المكتب التعاوني للدعوة والإرشاد وتوعية الجاليات بأبها أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه وعلى اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما I'm very pleased to be here this evening and I thank my brothers and colleagues at the Islamic Educational Center in Abha for inviting me to share with them what they've been doing over the years such a distinguished and a unique program where it aims to help participants to acquire some of the basic tools to give da'wah for the sake of Allah. I thank uh, Sheikh Hassan Lasme <laughs> for giving me the place and the time since I think there was uh, messed up in the, the schedule, at, at least was misinformed about the time. فَجَزَاهُ خَيْرًا وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ Today, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ Today we'll be handling an issue that I've been trying many times to find something different. But at the last moment, I remember that I was only having this topic. <laughs> they gave me the choice, Zawamullah Khair, like it's me who limited himself to such kind of a topic. Before going into this, I, on the way, uh, I've been thinking, uh, as people who intend to give da'wah, for the sake of Allah, especially to non-Muslims. And I think da'wah requires the high most communication skills ever, in addition to the knowledge about this deen. And it is uh, a belief that I have uh, that a da'iyah should work out in developing themselves. I think there is a lot of noise coming from the sister's side. Fajizahum Allah khair if they could just yani, help us. <laughs> noise. noise. Yes. Salamu alaykum I think uh, there is some noise coming from your side. May Allah reward you. It dis yani, distracts the others. So when I was in my way, I said, let's look at the type of people that you usually encounter when we talk with them about Islam, either here in our country where you have millions of non-Muslims, or when you go abroad, and many of you come from different countries, and some of your countries, the majority are non-Muslims. So uh, I was trying to categorize these types of people that I call them target of communication about Islam, okay, of introducing Islam to them one way or another. Uh, you have in one hand people who quote-unquote Christian, yep, they are Christians. Something that we need to know that the word Christian has become meaningless nowadays. People call themselves Christians for convenience because they don't have any other term, other way to call themselves in a religious way they call it. But there are hundreds of denominations in Christianity. This is for people who believe that they have faith. They believe in God in any form or any way. So this is something that you should have in mind. That not all Christians are Christians. Okay? This is contradiction in, ter contradiction in terms. But this is a reality. This is a reality. Uh, there is a small group among the Christians who are very active, very adamant, we cannot deny that there are some truly faithful people who believe with true faith and they, they, they are trying to worship God in the best way they know and they think that whether it's Catholicism, Protestantism, Baptism, any Mormon, whatever, Benicastle, it's Jehovah Witness. There are hundreds of denominations. Some 
and those make a small minority. There, is a lot, there are a lot who are benefiting. They're benefiting from marketing Christianity because it's the nature of man, of human beings. It's, it's, it's part of us that we need faith, that we need faith. Somehow, and sometimes it's not the right one. Sometimes it's the not the right one. Uh, this is when you talk about Christians. There are the majority of the people of the world, I could call them are atheists. They are with no religion, the vast majority. Even among the millions who call themselves Christian, in reality, they take Christianity for convenience. It's part, it's part of social life. So they are not really concerned much about religion, in reality. If I we're facing a problem in a world that has become atheists, they deny the existence of God, or they don't care about it. They don't care about it. They don't recognize the existence of God, any God. Okay? And sometimes they don't care. Okay? There is a third group, which is also an important group, that are not only careless, but they are anti-religion, no matter what that religion is. They are anti-faith. Okay? They have a very antagonistic view about any form of belief. So they are not only disbelieving, no. They are raising an enmity against any form of belief. And you look at the role of Islam among all these. In places where religion is denounced, talking about religion in many communities nowadays has become a taboo has become a taboo. Don't talk about religion. We're not talking religion. Sometimes people, when they make fun of themselves, oh, let's talk religion. See? And this is the state that the world has gone through. This is the state that the world has gone through. And Islam in the middle, it's neither Christianity, nor Buddhism, nor Hinduism, nor uh, uh, all forms of, uh, of isms that exist in the world. And it is the only way of God that has been kept pristine and for guidance for humankind. It has the only source of guidance that has been kept intact with no manipulation over history. And there is evidence for that. Another problem with Islam is that many misconceptions have been raised about Islam. And new ones are created because what they call there is, a, there is an industry that creates misconceptions about Islam. It's an industry. Academic, media, and in all fields, even in business. Because sometimes, and many times, Islam stands on the way and the evil desire, in the way of the evil desires of many people. It conflicts with their interests. Walihad Allah Azza wa Jalla yaqul fi al-Quran, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ Who is greater in transgression and zulm than a person who has taken his own desires to be his own God. For the world now, people in the world, vast majority of people in the world, have taken their own desires to be their, not only God, gods, because desires sometimes conflict. You see, sometimes conflict. Islam, uh, as, as we believe as Muslims, is the final way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The religion of Allah that he chose for humanity from the beginning, no doubt about that, but has been finalized, completed, and perfected through Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And we carry many points of strength that no other faith has. One of that is a fundamental belief for the Muslims that they believe in all prophets with no discrimination. 
No way, no religion in the world, man-made or revealed, remnants of the revealed sacred religions, is still having that belief. So this is a very important point of strength. And it is a point of challenge that is observed. And this is when you realize there is a lot, there are many, not many, many is not the world, magnificent number of misconceptions raised about the personality of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know why? And mostly from the Christian and the Jewish side. Do you know why? Why? This is true. But there is a point related to what I mentioned. Yes, yes, brother. Okay. No doubt, this is one of the reasons. At the sister side, side, do you have uh, anything to say? Yes, brother. They consider it the main enemy. Islam is the main enemy to Christianity. But why they target Prophet Muhammad وسلم, so fearlessly, endlessly, every day? Every time they bring a new thing about Prophet Muhammad. He's the symbol of the Jewish side. Yes, he's the symbol of Muslims, yes. If you discredit Prophet Muhammad, then the whole Yes, true. Okay, but there is something very important that they related. Can you insult Prophet Jesus? Can you talk? No. They know this is a weak point with the Muslims. That the Muslims cannot do the same thing. You see, Akhwan, you've got to realize, they know this. They know very much about this, that we, they, we cannot do it. We cannot do it. Okay? So this is uh, uh, an issue that we have now tried to, to have an idea of the type of people that we're handling. I'm not really summarizing, I mean, getting all uh, forms of people, but I'm trying to go three major types of people that I talk about. Can you remember them? Can you, anybody would tell me about them? Just make sure that we're going the right track or I feel them understood sometimes. Non-believers and atheists. That's what I We talked about people with no faith. They are not interested. Atheists. And we talked about certain people who call themselves religious, okay? Religious. And those who are practicing their own religions are a minority in the world. They make a minority. And we talk about people who are anti-religion. And the number is expanding, by the way. Of the third category, the number is expanding. They have their own reasons. What are some of the reasons that made them become anti-religion? Yes. Because Islam is contradicts our religion. Yes. Because Islam is contradicts It's not only Islam. They are anti-religion, any religion. Ex-religion, any religion. They are, have become anti-religion. Antagonistic. Because the religion will limit their ability, their views, their beliefs like this. It could be, but they could have become an atheist and they didn't care. They got confused. Okay, this could be. There are too many religions. Yes. They could have been atheists. Maybe they didn't have to be anti-religious. Yes, Sheikh. There's so many contradictions in their religion. This is another issue. Whenever they go into a religion, some of them have been like uh, Hindu. They say, when you grow up and you say, I've been worshiping Shiva and Lingam and uh, what do you call it, all those, Rama and, and anything could be God. In Hinduism, anything could be God. So at certain point they say, yeah, so uh, people in Christianity, and I had an atheist professor, he was a friend of mine, and he had a priest who was his neighbor. And he met him one day 
uh, he said, I'm leaving your neighborhood. I said, why? He said, I changed the nomination. He probably was a Baptist and he wanted to become, I don't know, something he didn't, I don't remember, so I won't say something that he didn't know. But he changed. He said, why? He said, they paid me more to preach. So some of them know that religion has become business. It has become business. You know, televangelists, they get billions. They become billionaires in no time. So to them, they didn't trust those people who believe, who say that they represent God. Do you know that the Mormons elect a messenger every six years? <laughs> they elect a messenger. They say, you're the messenger of God and you're apostle. <laughs> you see? So if, if you look at this, Sometimes you don't blame, blame people for being confused. If you're guided, others are misguided. Others are going astray. And Allah summarized those two categories of people into two. So we have people who Allah is angry with and people who are going astray. And the vast majority of the people of the world are going astray. There are very few who know the truth and they deny it. Those are maghdubi alayhim. And there are the vast majority are going astray. And this will lead us to this issue. Islam got in the middle. So it's not a religion. And say, no, Islam is different. See, no, Islam is not different. They will tell you Islam is just one of these religions. Uh, and we cannot deny that Islam has been commercialized, has been misused, just like any other religions. We should be very frank and serious, and, and this is something we don't deny, okay? We don't deny that some are really using Islam for other purposes, uh, either for their own benefit or for some form uh, for an interest that conflicts with the spirit of Islam conflicts with the spirit of Islam. But Islam, unfortunately, is the miss. It's not only the miss, the most misunderstood religion among all the religions of the world. Although Muslims make 1.5 billion people, and Islam is growing so fast, faster than anybody could really estimate. So we are having a very uh, critical situation in the world. And believe me, only Islam could solve all these problems. But the problem is not with Islam. It is with the Muslims. It is with the Muslims. It is with us. So where are the problem? So, we don't solve the problem with others, we solve it for ourselves. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin, hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. This is something basic. And this is why I'm trying, before going into uh, misconceptions raised about Islam and others, we talk about ourselves since this is a very important question that we need to tackle before going to others. <coughs> I'll give an example. Allahumma salli ala Rasulullah. Sallu ala Nabi, akhwan. Nadal yawm mubarak. Min al-sunnah al-ikthar min salat ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many times have you spoken to a non-Muslim about Islam and hid Islam? Said Islam is a beautiful religion, but I don't see it in reality. How many times? How, how many of you could you raise your hands that somebody spoke to you about this? Raise your hand. Abu <laughs> Ali, <laughs> hundreds of people. So the problem is not with Islam, people accepting Islam. It is accepting us. And this is why we look at the personality of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Something I learned from Abdullah Abu Ashi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that 
you've got to win the people for yourself before winning them for Islam. Tara, this is something very important. When the Prophet ﷺ came to Quraysh, they called him Kadhab Sadiq al Amin. The honest and trustworthy. Subhanallah. You see? For they know his personality. So the people who accepted Islam, they had no second opinion about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They had no second opinion about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And they realized that he was truthful. Even the leaders of Quraysh never talked about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as being dishonest or untrustworthy. They never challenged these qualities in the character of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Even Abu Sufyan when he went to the Caesar and he spoke to him. He said that looked, he couldn't lie about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Although he was away from him, but he realized this very strong, truthful personality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa before he was here Prophet. Today we had a program, alhamdulillah, we celebrated 300 something new Muslims. And today, 29 people became Muslims today. Allahumma salli ala rasulullah. Those people, they lo immediately when they become Muslim, they love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Right away. And it is this kind of uh, charm on the personality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that still continues through ages, through his teachings. Even people who didn't believe in him. And in... Uh, uh, one brother, his name is Shah Ibad Rahman. Al Hiktu Ali, Shah Ibad Rahman. Al Hiktu Rahman. Anyway, and I had a book about heroes, worship, heroes and heroes, hero worship by Thomas Carlyle. Uh, although I was struggling with the English because it was written in very old English. But when he was speaking about Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, and he was not a Muslim, he was given lectures every Tuesday. Some of these lectures were attended by the nobility of the English society. And this man was speaking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a way that would re make you really wonder why this man is not a Muslim. And probably he was a Muslim, we don't know. But this charm in the personality of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made many people who are non-Muslims write about him. Find in his own personality issues that we couldn't find ourselves. And you say somebody like Michael Hart, writing his book about the most influential leaders in the world, and he would list Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And he said, I don't believe him, in him as a prophet. But he couldn't really, couldn't hide the truth that this was the utmost, the greatest leader ever walked on earth. Allahumma salli ala rasulullah. Uh, this will get us to this issue, Ikhwan, that uh, uh, I don't want to be philosophical here, but the issue is very big, uh, which is misconceptions are related to doubts. You see? Some people, they don't have misconceptions, but they have doubts. These doubts are created by misconceptions. Because if you don't give me the right information, Somebody else is going to give me a different form of information that may not be true. And this is what we face in the world. We're not given the right image about Islam. We're not given the right information. We're not standing out to tell people what Islam is. Somebody else is doing on our behalf. And they may not do it. They may not do it in the right way. They may not do it in the right way. As we mentioned, that there is a huge population in the world that disagrees with what you believe in. A huge population that is expanding that has become anti-religion. That has become anti-religion. And this will take us, uh, small, I mean, this is, uh, um, just giving you an, a definition of what might be called misconception. Somebody could read it. 
جلاسز واحد من الخلف انا اتاكد ذات ذي كان ريد ذس بريذر جو هيد ريد يس So it's any issue. Sometimes we have misconception about uh, people from other countries. What do you think of Dorian? You know Dorian. Have you heard of Dorian? Anybody knows what Dorian is? You know? <laughs> Sometimes when you smell it, you have very bad misconception about this kind of fruit. But when you taste it, we make the smell bad about Islam. We Muslims. But people, if they taste it, things will be different. Believe me. And this is why it is all over history. I, mean, I, I, I was traveling into an island to Malta the other day. And, you know, most of the Mediterranean islands were Muslim islands. And I was astonished about the language that there is a huge remnants of Arabic in Maltese. Mm -hmm. Yes, but they are very antagonistic against Islam and Muslims. They hate Muslims so much. They have the Knights of St. John's. And that island, this is the island where they, the Crusades used to consult those knights. We know a little about what history, but probably uh, uh, there is no incidents in history where Muslims would leave their religion. They commit apostasy. No. This very small, insignificant percentage, if any. In this island, the Muslims were either killed or expelled because they didn't accept converting to Christianity. They had these three choices to convert, to be executed, or to, if you could run by yourself. Okay? This is part, tell you, the attraction that Islam has when people believe in it. I know many new Muslims. Today you had 29 of them. I know many of them are struggling with their families, with their wives, with their children. But they're not ready to give up, no matter. Yes, they're ready to challenge others. And they are ready to sacrifice and sacrifice more. Because when you know the truth, it will set you free. This is the real truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see? Uh, for this is just sometimes people either have incorrect interpretation or understanding regarding a certain issue. Have you asked a non Muslim? Especially people with Western mentality to tell you what Islam is. Have you been in this experience? Yes? What did they tell you? Could you tell us, sister? Could you speak up? Because I have a mic you don't have. This is sometimes understanding that Muslims believe in Muhammad. Muhammad is their God. Uh, this is, a, I mean, expected because Christians believe in Jesus. Buddhists believe in Buddha. Buddha. You see, so they expect that. I mean, Muhammad has become, ha brought a new religion. He claimed himself God, so you believe in him, and he called his religion Ish, Islam. Anybody else? Have you spoke, a non-Muslim speaking to you, telling you what Islam is? I don't usually tell them. When I speak to them, I say, tell me what you think about Islam. For me, um, a lot of 
ask the doctor, visiting doctor to our center, what do you think about Islam? I know that he is Christian. He, he said to me, I am non believer. And this is the majority, the majority of them. Anyway, I'll tell you what, what happened to me. Oh, Jazakallah khair. I thought you want to give me water. Anyway. <laughs> 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 So I met, uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, he was from the army. He was from the army, an American, uh, I think he was a colonel or something. He came to train uh, pilots. He came to train pilots. Uh, quite an old man, anyway. So I, he, we, we chatted a little bit and I said, what do you think of Islam? What do you think of Islam? What does Islam mean to you? What do you think his response was? Terrorism. I must have told you before. Terrorism. Yeah, said Islam is terrorism. Subhanallah. Taban, when I speak to any Muslim, say, is Islam a terrorist religion? No. Muslims, Taban, it's not a matter of denying, because you cannot deny a reality of your religion. Is Muhammad your prophet? Is the Quran the final word of Allah? Those who don't believe in the Quran, they are non-Muslims? They are disbelievers? We cannot deny facts about religion because we can't. Jazakallah khair. Wa saqaka min hawdi nabiyyik. Okay? So we cannot deny, you cannot deny, denounce things in Islam. You can't. If you denounce any part of Islam, you become non-Muslim. You see? And this is, but we don't know that ever our religion is terrorism. Anyway, uh, people don't think it's, uh, this is highly educated man, and this has become uh, the concept that many people have been acquiring over the last number of years. And there are many people in the media, in business, in politics, in academia, who push for that, Novels are written every day about that, you see. Dramas are made about that. Movies are made about that. Have you heard about jihad in America? Anyway, there's something, but I just want you to feel the taste that now the challenge with other people, it's not a matter of Christianity, you have married three wives, ten wives, Madrish, chopping. No, it's a matter of denouncing Islam altogether. And every day they tried with these things in the past and they failed. These misconceptions have become very old. Okay? Yeah, you bring the Bible to me, say, come on, I don't believe in the Bible as well. You bring the Vedas, I don't believe in the Vedas anymore. So the world is creating a new religion for itself, which is to be anti religion. Anti religion. Uh, how are we going to deal with these issues? I mean, it's, it's, it's industry, as I said. It's industry producing computers? No. Producing water? No. Producing misconceptions about Islam. And I mean it. I mean it. So, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ لِيَصُدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ that the non-believers investing their money to deter people of the way of Allah. They will spend, they spend billions, trillions. فَسَيُنْفِقُونَهَا ثُمَّ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ ثُمَّ يظلمون. They will feel sorrow, sorry about it and they will be defeated. And this is the promise of Allah. But we need to change. Yes, brother. 
Good. Yes, 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 please. You, you give me a chance to drink and listen to you. Drink water. Anyway, uh, on my last travel, I met uh, a lady. She was supposed to work as a tourist, uh, a tourist guide, but she was a scholar. She was appointed to guide people of certain quality. And I asked her a question about Islam. She said, let me tell you something. I'm writing a book about security, world security. And I'm talking, writing about neutral state. Neutral state. This is a few days ago. <laughs> a few days ago. I said, what do you mean by a neutral state? I said, a state that may not, that give, I mean, a, a law that will give chance to a state not to fight other states. And she was looking, comparing Christianity, I mean the Bible, and the Quran. Uh, and you know on that island in Malta, it is a very strong Roman Catholic. And the vast majority, you see them with that? Even in the flag of the country you have there. Everywhere you go, the cross is there. I wanted to buy a souvenir. <laughs> it was full of... I said, I cannot buy a souvenir of this time, you see. If I said, uh, she said, I studied the Quran because there was a person in the university. Uh, his name was Professor Martin Zamit. He claims to be from an Arab origin. But he didn't tell me that he was a Muslim. Anyway, in cooperation with the Islamic Center in Malta, they translated the meanings of the Quran. And this lady benefited from this translation. And she said, I went through the translations, the Quran, and I found no other religion but Islam that allows for a neutral state. Subhanallah. But this is, I haven't really checked this, but this is her claim, a neutral state. Anyway, we're not going to take, if we take a misconcept one by one, we'll spend years and years here without finishing with them. Because I told you we're dealing with an industry, vicious circle. We're dealing with mass production, okay, of misconcepts because Islam conflicts with the interests of those people. <coughs> so they're not going to stop. But we need to change our tactics. Therefore, we avoid these misconcepts. Uh, the, you know, Misconcept didn't start today. They have been here for years, even since the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Alam tara ila ladhi haja Ibrahim fi rabbihi anatahu Allahu al-mulkid. Qala Ibrahim, Rabbi al-lahi dhi yuhi wa meet. Qala, when Abraham said to this king that my God raises a life and puts to death, said he took one who is supposed to be put into this seat, go, you're free. And he brought somebody who was innocent and he killed him. See, I could do that. Then Ibrahim followed another tactic. Immediately he said, So if you can do these great things, so do what Allah is doing. Allah is bringing the sun from the east, so bring us from the so we need to change tactics. You know, misconcepts will be generated. 
every day. It's, it's all the time during even those great prophets before Muhammad sallallahu Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And they come up with all these uh, misconcepts that continue going on and on. Now, uh, we have, uh, it has become, uh, as I mentioned, the word industry, and I mean it. People make business. They live on misconcepts. They make billions. They demolish countries. They wipe out people. They just use some misconcepts as pretext on which they could do a lot of evil. A lot of... And nobody questioning them. You know, using the word terrorist, you know, in most countries in the world, you could be captured imprisoned without going on trial and sometimes put in, to death for the claim that you are a terrorist. You see how, how they manifested that? Uh, Jihad in America, this film, uh, one of my brothers, I haven't seen it anyway, but it says that they picture the man before going and exploding the airplane or hijacking it or whatever, that the man will go and make wudu. So they tell you that making wudu, and this is what a friend of mine, let's say, at that time I was visiting the States, he was from Libya, his name was Khalifa, and he, he lived among the Americans for like now 30 or 40 years. He's an American anyway. So he said when I go to work, sometimes he would go and make wudu, and some of his colleagues came to him, he was in the bathroom, he said, Khalifa, what are you doing? I said, what's going on? I said, are you going to explode the <laughs> building? I said, are you crazy? I said, this is what I saw in the movie. And this is where they get their own idea about Islam. From the movies. From the silly novels. You see? And there is a lot of business behind that. People buy that. When you have jihad in America, it becomes a best seller. A best seller. Yeah, has become a best seller. So I'm just telling you how serious it has become. Sometimes we overlook misconcepts. You see? For these are some of the sources. What I'll be focusing on is really this one. Anyway, behavior of some, it's not only some Muslims, of the majority of, is this true or not? So we cannot stop misconceptions. Maybe this is, who knows, what they go through is a trial from Allah for what we're doing. That these misconcepts are created every day. Are we really practicing Islam in our lives? Are we? Are we good representatives of Islam? We don't claim to be perfect. And this is something that we know in Christianity. Just like this lady to a big cathedral. It's called the Cathedral of the Knights of St. John's. And they, you, you walk on the graves. Everybody will buy the place of his grave in, inside the cathedral of these knights. I said, oh, they have been wiped out because they were living a life of celibacy. You know celibacy? But the tour guide was laughing. She said, but everybody was having his own babies. <laughs> so it's not real life of celibacy. For this deen really is the deen that attracts people, that satisfies the needs of people, that does not stand between them and the rights for which Allah has created them. And those, you know, they're worshipped, you know? Those knights, they're considered to be saints. And they, they were worshipped. Highly respected. You go and visit their graves. But, <laughs> really? But now everybody's stepping on their own grave. The tourists come because they want to get some money. So everybody's stepping on their graves. Anyway, just, uh, for, these are some of the sources that I thought uh, 
don't know what time it is because they want to leave time for discussion. Uh, for the sources of contemporary misconceptions about Islam, because every era we have misconceptions. Okay, at some time we didn't have the internet, so we didn't have sites. Uh, one time we didn't have WhatsApp, so even WhatsApp has become a source of misconceptions. All new technologies, if we don't use them for the sake of clarifying the minds of people and informing them about Islam, they will be used to. I was very pleased today uh, when uh, a piece of news to me came, I hope it's right, that now they'll be translating the khutbah of Al-Haram al-Makki, okay? Al-Haram in a number of languages. And they started with English and Urdu. English and Urdu. You see, for a long time we've been away from this. Because Muslims have become very ignorant about their deen. How come you want me to lend you money while I'm poor? I don't have money. You want to seek knowledge from me and the right information? I don't have any information. Sometimes wrong information. So we've been away from our religion. I'm telling you that I had once a professor from an Arab country came to our university. He was a very good man. And we asked him, let's go on to pray. He said, Abdullah, he's, he's like 45 at that time. He took the person aside and said, I'm sorry, I haven't prayed all my life. He said, are you willing to pray? He said, yes, but I don't know how to do it. He, he said, how, you know how to make wudu? He said, no, I don't have it. You see, sometimes we, we are overlooking our problems. And we've got to be very... Uh, true to ourselves before inviting others. Before inviting. I'm not saying don't invite others. No. وَدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمُوْغِضَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِهِ It is a must. If we don't do that, we'll be in trouble. We'll be. And alhamdulillah, we have many da'as all over the world and many people who are already practicing Islam. And the number is really increasing. Even within the communities, that we're very antagonistic against Islam. Now it's very common to go to any village, I'm not saying city, any town in England or the United States or Canada, and you find a masjid, a mosque, and you find indigenous people who have become Muslims. In Malta there was no single Muslim. Now more than 10,000 Muslims of a population, yes. And they have a vote in, in the government. You see, things have, they will change. And we believe, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said it clearly. لَيَبْلُغَنَّ هَذَا الْأَمْرُ مَا بَلَغَ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَلَا يَبْقَى بَيْتُ وَبَرٍ وَلَا مَدَرْ إِلَّا دَخَلُوا هَذَا الدِّينِ بِعِزِّ عَزِيزٍ أَوْ ذِلِّ نَلِيلٍ We know this. This is a promise. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa never lied. And he never lied. And he doesn't speak out of himself. That this, re deen, this religion will reach every place in the world. Where there is night and day, it will go there. And this is what we'll see. Ma insha'Allah tahqiqan. Ta'aliqan. Tahqiqan insha'Allah. I mean it. Because this is the same Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it will take place. And we know that. But we need to work for it. Uh, uh, do you have any comments about these, Ikhwan? They have a list there. Do you have something to add to the list? I don't know if there is anything added later on. No. Okay, let's go back to the list and see what you think. If it's coming back. Yes, alhamdulillah. Yes. Tfadal, yeah, tfadal. Yes, brother. Uh, somebody told me a strange story that once he was uh, studying uh, in uh, Britain, uh, he was hiring a house uh, uh, and living with uh, an old English woman. And once she... Uh, saw him uh, praying, uh, she went to the police and told them that uh, there is a magician in my, <laughs> in my house. I will, and they came and they told him, to, uh, told, him, told him to get out. And he was a Muslim and uh, from uh, an Arab country. And he said that, uh, the police tell, tell you, yes, she is afraid and you must go out. You are, uh, she said that you are a magician. What, what did I do? <laughs> you are praying and she, this old woman, thought that if you may destroy her house and they put him out 
So she wants to get evil out of her house. You cannot blame her. I mean it. Because we never told people what we're doing, why we're doing it. Yani, don't think it's strange. We are uh, live, we're living in a world of complicated ignorance. Complicated, yes, very complicated ignorance. We think we are sophisticated with technology, but you know in the world that here we have more than probably one billion people who cannot read or write in our world. You know this? So the, the world is not really getting educated. It's getting uh, deteriorating. Anyway, this is, the, don't, this is because we didn't people what we have. Tell people what you have. I'll tell you a story. We had once a man from Thailand, a Thai. He was living in Khamis for, he said, I've been living in Khamis for 25 years. But he became Muslim in a strange way. I will not tell you what made him become Muslim. Because it's very strange. Uh, anyway, he said, <clears throat> I've been here for 25 years. Everybody, most people talk to me about everything. But none have discussed Islam with me. I know people who have lived in this country, and this is the heartland of Islam. For many years, for a decade or more, and they go back to their countries without being informed about what Islam is. And we told them how to make kapsa. They become very good at making kapsa. I mean it. Their wives, so. and all these things, huh? But we have never told them who Prophet Muhammad was. What did the Quran mean to us? What is really Islam? How can Islam change their lives? Uh, in our visit, I'm going to tell you from experience, recent experience. Uh, we visit the Islamic Center in Malta, and they gave me a copy of the <coughs> meanings, the translation of the meaning of the Quran. Jazakumullah khair. Taban, we don't have Maltese here. We might bring some. Anyway, but anyway, look at the book. And we were going into uh, an official visit. Maltese. But anyway, the way is Maltese uh, is, is very much related to Arabic. We linguists call it an Arabic Creole. An Arabic Creole. It has been really influenced by Arabic. A lot of the vocabulary in that language is of Arabic origin. Anyway, for any of the man, the director of the university invited us for dinner. And I said, I want to give him a gift. What kind of gift shall, you, shall he give him? I was hesitant to give him the meanings. The, this is an official. Allah helped me to just go ahead and go over this. Because sometimes we think there is a conflict between an official visit or a tourist visit or a da'wah visit. Because our life is not da'wah. We differentiate between things. If I gave him the gift, I said, I looked for a gift that I would give you. The man was very happy. Allah, he was very happy. He was very, he said, oh, I promise that I'll read it. I didn't ask him to promise to read. I just, just as a gift. And I said, Abdullah, please, if you have other literature, I'll be happy to have. So, sometimes we put barriers between us and other people. Satanic barriers. They're not real. We had a, once from the European Union, somebody visiting our university. She was a lady, by the way, in the medical field of a very high status. So she came to the university and she met the rector, Mudir al -Jana. The rector spoke to somebody and said, don't we have anything to give to this lady? We gave her King Khalid University. We gave her a nice bag and some literature about how the university was. But the rector, Jazallah Khair, was really interested, said, I don't want this lady to go without something, having something. So they called me. It happened that in my office I had copies of the meaning of the, of the, meaning of the Holy Quran and some other literature. So I just put it in a very I mean, plastic bag. I didn't have anything to just. And I gave it to her. And I said, I want you to know what is inside. <coughs> you don't want to have a surprise gift. She, I took this, the book from the, the Quran from the bag and I gave it to her. Oh, awesome. She was very happy to have this gift. It has, she has been given many gifts. But they didn't mean anything to her. There is a big difference 
between telling people who you are and being proud of who you are and introducing what you have rather than, I know it's in the marketplace, she could go into the internet and Amazon.com and get one, but she would never do that. Sometimes people need help. You have many patients, if you're a doctor, that will not come to you. If you don't open your heart to them and try to understand them, they will not tell you what they feel. For sometimes we just put barriers. We'll go to my question again. <laughs> Can you find something, another source? Yes, brother. So you think those people are the atheists or they are anti-religion? I, I don't think they're atheists, but they have a mission like in uh, propagating Christianity uh, later on or uh, making people deviated from Islam. This is something very important and I, and I agree with you. If they would, were secular, if they were secular, they would be atheists and they wouldn't care. You practice whatever you want. But sometimes they're targeting Islam and Islamic practices. And Islamic practices, which is true. And they are really investing on the need of Muslims because, again, we care less about our brothers and sisters. Somebody else is taking care of them. Somebody else is taking care of them. Jazakallah khair. This could be, I'll add that, inshallah. Yeah, so they're different from the missionaries. They're not missionaries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they have other aims. Okay, anybody else? Yes, brother. Yeah, this could be, but I'm talking about the sources of contemporary misconceptions about Islam. Yes. Like what? Uh, different professions. Like, uh, you know, uh, now uh, if in, in Malta, this is a small island. It's a population of uh, less than half a million of people. But they said, a cooperation with the university, you would like to have people who are specialists, interested in Islamic banking. In Islamic banking. I said, why? I said, now there is, a w I mean, we feel, you know, after, the, you know, the, the, what, the collapse, you know, financial collapse that has taken place and concession that took place in the world, that we need, we think the Islamic banking could be a solution. You see? So people probably in the past in banking business, and they didn't want this because Islam says no, no riba, no interest. Although it's in Christianity, don't get involved in usury. Okay? It's a Christian belief, you see? But they don't really care about it. And Islam stands in their own way. Even some banks that work in Muslim countries, they work with, with interest, you see. For these banks, because now people, bankers, think that Islam, oh, could be a good way to invest money through the Islamic way. Rajhi didn't get bankrupt, you see. Uh, who else? Al Bilad and other people didn't get bankrupt when most banks were going into uh, financial disaster, a catastrophe, okay? So this could be. Any, any other sources? Uh, sometimes those who teach Islam, I think they are not fit for the job. And those who do not, they should do it. Because uh, sometimes those who preach, maybe they are not well read, and they have different characteristics which do not attract others. So uh, this, not for all, but few cases I have seen that it's just Brother, they're not few. Believe, believe me. Yeah. And believe also, me. there's so-called intellectuals who are well informed about other disciplines. Just they don't study Islam. But they tell about Islam. They comment on Islam. So this, this is also one of the problems. Do you agree with the brother? Who agrees with him? Oh, inshallah. From the sister's side, do you have, uh, side, do you have any... any, any 
uh, in addition to what we have, uh, we have misconception, misinformation about Islam, behavior of some Muslims, Orientalists, motivated journalists, missionaries, ignorance, and atheists or atheism. And two or three now sources have been added. Yes, brother. I, I agree with you 100%. If you don't really this, know the smell of durian, you will not buy it. And, and it is very expensive fruit. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, this is a saying in Arabic. That, and it is part of human nature that are, you, are, you have become an enemy of what you are ignorant about, if you don't know. So if people in ignorance is something that is really... Uh, uh, you want to say something, brother? So I want to say something. Uh, uh, I want to talk about especially a okay, group of people in our country. They are considered as religious leaders, but actually they are doing business with Islam. The Sufis. Oh. Okay. So these people, okay, they are also devising a tutorial about Islam. Actually, this is their business. They so, so, so uh, we know, brother, it's part of the behavior of many Muslims. As a matter of fact, this is true. We cannot deny this fact that there are many who are misrepresenting Islam, who are misrepresenting Islam, and there are others who are investing in this misrepresentation to turn them into misconceptions, to turn them into misconceptions. Uh, we'll move into another part. We know that Every day we'll get new misconceptions and from different sources. We realize that we Muslims work as one of the main sources uh, because uh, we cannot deny that many of the misconcepts about Islam are true. And they're true to the certain contexts, but they have been generalized and overgeneralized. Just like one day I was in London, and uh, I got in a taxi, and he said, the police stops us every day while they have, they have a bag, and you blow into the bag to t test if you are drunk or not. Okay, I didn't know how you do it. I said, alhamdulillah, Muslims, yani, akid, Muslim drivers have no problem. He said, ha, ha, ha. he was laughing at me. I said, why? He said, all of them drink. I see. You see, and this is a taxi. He knew his colleagues. He knew his colleagues. I thought I was very happy to go into a taxi where he was a Muslim. Say, Salamu alaikum, how are you doing, brother? Take me to the. You, know, you, you feel the relationship because this is a Muslim. You see, but what kind of. They will tell you that Muslims are liars. The concept that those have in about Muslims, Muslims are liars. They say they don't drink and they are drinking. They are. And this is a small group of people, okay, who misrepresent Islam at this level, but this concept they get about those people. And you go to other things. You go to other things as well. I mean, you could <laughs> move from one step to another. Uh, and this is, this is the problem. Yeah, sometimes we, we prevent, we deter people away from the religion of Allah through our practice. It's better to stay away. And, and this is the problem. People tend to generalize. When somebody says, uh, okay, I met somebody from Bangladesh, okay, and he was speaking Marawana. You know Marawana? They say, it must be all Bangladeshi people speak Marawana. This takes place or not? No, generalization takes place. Yes. Is this true? No, 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 no. You see? But this, these misconceptions, sometimes they, they, they are emerging out of a wrong interpretation or a mal practice that has been generalized. So we play a role in it, as you mentioned. We play a role in it, and we play a major role. So how we deal with these misconceptions? Uh, you see, I had a list. This is not, you know, an uh, exclusive list. 
but we could bring other things. You know, it's just I get this down to you. Do you think everybody will, anybody, uh, most people will accept the Quran, Quranic verses? To be Muslims will say yes, but many non-Muslims may not accept that because if I don't believe, if I believe in the Quran, that the, the, the Quran is true, then I'll become Muslim. You see, so. Incidents from the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Although there are occasions That will work Okay From the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam They don't believe in the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Okay How about scholars discussions I'll give you an example You know Abdullah Mas'ud A great Unfortunately, I'm sure that the vast majority of Muslims don't know who Abdullah Mas'ud is. One of the great, not only the, the greatest companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So bl before blaming others, we should. So he was moving close to Jerusalem, along with his, some of the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and others, the followers of companions, Tabi'un. There was a monk, you know, a monk on the monastery, Rahib. And he looked at them, he liked the way they were dressing, said, come, come. They came to him and said, do you have any among you among, from the companions of Muhammad? They said, yes, this is one of the great companions of Muhammad, Sallallahu Then he said to him, you are from among them? He said, yes. Said so they, they ask you questions. Now he's raising misconceptions. You say the people of paradise, they eat, drink, and enjoy, and they don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> Have you thought about this? There are people who study the Quran word by word, who study the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad word by word. Believe me. They spend their lifetime. What would this orientalist, in, he's in the orientalist department, Martin uh, Zimit. What kind of benefit he would get with translating the Quran, the meaning of the Quran? You see? Anyway, <laughs> uh, Abdullah Masoud smiled. Those people are giving guidance. What taqullah? Allah. Fear Allah, Allah will teach you, give you knowledge. Yeah, we'll never be good Muslims, good guys, without taqwa, without fearing Allah. Fear it. If you think we are better than those non Muslims, for the, the sake of being better than them, sometimes we're not. كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ when Allah is talking to the companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when they became Muslims, say, oh, look at the kuffar. Say, no, you were like them before. It is Allah who guided you. So even when you look at others, sometimes we look down at them because they are kuffar. We should really in, realize that we have a responsibility towards them. Okay, you know what the word kafir means? In the Arabic uh, uh, meaning, the root of the world? To conceal, to hide the truth. This is what a cover. You cover the truth. It's the word cover. In English, taken from the Arabic word, you see, kafir. <laughs> you see, kafir. Okay, kufr. Okay, kafir, the past tense. Okay, which is covered in English. Exactly with the same pronunciation, with the difference between the va and the fa. <laughs> in Arabic. So, the... Uh, anyway, you see, fa they need our help. They, they need us. As a matter of fact, they need us. Fa Abdullah Mas'ud said to them, how about the baby in the womb of his mother? Do babies get nutrition? He said, yes. He said, do they get to the bathroom? So they were confused. He said, if Allah could do this, to a living being in front of us, 
he could do something greater than that in the hereafter. You see? He didn't tell them, Allah, Quran, and so on. No, 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 because th those people don't understand this. He was speaking to their own, huh? their own mentality. He was dealing with their own mentality, just like Ibrahim, alayhi salam. He didn't really question the man that this person, yeah, he didn't really do it. He would just kill him. But if he's dead, now he's dying, he's dead, so raise him to be alive. He didn't really question that, Ibrahim alayhi salam. He went into another step. He said, Allah brings the sun from the east, bring it from the west. Yalla. Go ahead. Look at Abdullah ibn Saud. So we need to look, go into this. Those people have been meeting many Christians and faithful Christians of that time. They were more believing, I guess, than the Christians of today. There were many atheists at that time, you know, uh, Ahl Kalam, or many philosophers who went on, even they crept into the Islamic text and they created their own school of thought and, and they challenged some of the Hadith Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, this is something that we could really uh, get from the experience of, of other scholars and the greatest of the scholars are the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and looking at their lives because their mission was da'wah. Their mission was not fighting. Even they used the word fath. Fath means liberating. It's not the, what they use the word for nowadays, okay? <coughs> their aim is to spread the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to bring people out of darkness into light, to liberate people, and people were liberated as a matter of fact. They have been enslaved by dogma, by all forms of dogma, and Islam liberated them. They, they, they started thinking in a different way. So, uh, sacred writings of, of different groups, different religions, with whom this would work? With the faithful. If I'm not a practicing Hindu, I don't care about what he says. See, I don't care about the Vedas. So <laughs> it's not a big deal. If, 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 if I'm a, I say I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in the Bible. And most Christians don't believe in the Bible. They don't read the Bible. I remember I had a Filipino friend a long time ago. And I spoke to him and said, and he became Muslim. He was an operator. You know, operator, works in a company, as an operator. he would answer the phone. <coughs> he became Muslim because of talking with people. And he became a da'ya through as an operator. And I said, when people come to me, Christians speak to me, I say, read the Bible. I don't tell them to read the Quran. You know what will happen when they read the Bible? They'll eventually become Muslims. 99.999% of Christians have never read the Bible. Only they read portion that the priest is giving them in the church. That's all. If they go to church, and the majority don't go to church. Now they're selling churches. And many of them have been converted into Muslims. Some are very happy about that. There is still something about the Christians. I remember in the Islamic Center in Michigan, we had a mosque. And nearby there was a Baptist church. But nobody was going to the church. And the church got bankrupt. You know bankrupt? It, it broke, yeah. Because when you go there to church, you must pay something. Membership. To maintain the church. And this is something reasonable. To maintain what they had. And the priest who was taking care of the church said, I want to sell it because I cannot run the church. I cannot pay for the electricity, for the heat, for the air conditioning, for the mowing of the grass, for the people who will maintain the, the church will collapse. He wanted to sell it. We know about that at the Islamic Center, that they're going to sell it. And he didn't say anything, see? See how it's going to happen. And they're our neighbors. We, it's about 10 meter away. And they were very good neighbors. They would give us their own parking lot on Friday. And you know how sometimes we behave in parking? We do it there as well. Then we're good at blaming others. We're good at blaming others. We put all our problems on the non-believers. But we have never stood up and said it's our problem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu after Uhud, And the companions after Uhud, they were really, how come? We're defeated militarily. Where are we have the Prophet? Oh, Allah said, say, you have been through a calamity that you did twice of it to the non-believers. Now you question why? 
It is from your own selves. If we don't change, the whole world will not change. Period. These things will not stop. We need to move. Okay? For, anyway, this man, uh, when we offered him to buy the church, he said, businesses gave me this and this. He said, we cannot give you because we're not business. We are a religious organization just like you. And we're worshiping God. Just You think you worship God? And we, he said, okay. And he sold it for a small amount of money, believing that this will be a place where God will be worshipped, probably in a different way. They knew in their inside that those Muslims are following the truth. I'm not going to tell stories of that because I have many of them. Uh, but reality, uh, they are hiding the truth. This is why they are kuffar. Okay, they're covering the truth. And sometimes uh, uh, we translate the word kuffar as infidels. You know infidels? This word was not a Muslim word. It was a Christian word. They called you infidels. We have never called them infidels. We call them kuffar. And there is a big difference between the word infidel and an unbeliever. And a covering, one person who is covering. A big difference. A big difference. Uh, they don't like the word. They call, you say, you call us infidels. say, I never called you infidels. You call themselves infidels. You call us infidels. Okay. And this is what they say in Malta. They say, the Nights were fighting out against the infidels. I said, who are the infidels? <laughs> it is, it's according to them, the Muslims. Anyway, Allahumma salli ala hadhullah. Anyway, sometimes uh, it's useless to use these Old Testament, New Testament, Talmud, and Vedan because they don't believe in them. Sometimes we waste our time because this is only for a, sm a certain group of people who are faithful, who are comparing between religions, but not all people. And this is why I say it here, Ya Khwan, as an advice. Don't ever raise misconceptions or comparative religion with a person that you're calling to Islam. Unless they request to, unless they force you to, People need to know the simple message of Islam. Ask them. Talk about Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. What does a Muslim mean? Sometimes we jump into crucifixion and to. You know, this is for a small, a certain group of people. When they ask for it, when they ask for it, raising, dealing with misconceptions is not a good da'wah strategy. I don't think it's a good da'wah strategy. That's not the method of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, unless it is needed. Even Abdullah Mas'ud could have talked about with this monk about other things in Christianity, but he never. He just explained to him in a very to him in a simple way. Even with people raise misconceptions, we should deal them with, with them with open hearts and minds, and accommodate them. Take it easy. Islam is not going to disappear. Believe me. It's going to stay. The Quran is the only book that will prevail all over by the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is prevailing. So we're not worrying. About, sometimes we worry about Islam. No, worry about those people. Don't worry about Islam. Worry about those people. Worry about those people and care about them. So this is my experience. Lazy misconceptions from the beginning is not a good idea. I, this is my experience in da'wah maybe. I don't know. Others have their own experience. But I think we should avoid dealing with these matters unless it's needed. And sometimes, Allahumma salli ala rasulullah, most headaches will be relieved by an aspirin. I don't like Panadol. I like aspirin better. Okay, he's going to say Panadol. But I said aspirin. Paratisamol, no. I said it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a physician, so and I'm getting indulging in his own field anyway. For but stomach. I, huh? for stomach, <laughs> for stomach, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have a big stomach. We eat a lot, so aspirin would not really. We need aspirin. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, for, uh, most people don't need more than a panadol or an aspirin. Sometimes we get them with a medication that kills them. And this is bad doctors we have. Sometimes you go to the doctor, get application, a pile of pills. 
كلها يلا خذ you see and it kills you it hurts you okay and sometimes we need only panadol aspirin most people need an aspirin of islam they don't need all these complicated medications believe me they just need an aspirin of islam very simple to get relieve their own headache okay and sometimes we give, make, give them more headaches. Say, do you know any religion? And he will start reading. Say, so don't read about his religion. I want to tell him what Islam is. I don't care about his religion. I know his religion is false religion. I, no Muslim is having any doubt that those religions are false. But tell them what Islam is. Okay? Tell them what is. Islam is. And we talked about logic. And logic has become nowadays uh, the key word. Really, people have become very materialistic. They think they are, they call them rationalism, okay? They're rationalists, okay? So speak with me with logic. I want to understand, okay? Mind to mind. And there is, this is a challenge. Logic would fail you sometimes, okay? Would fail you sometimes. But anyway, this is one of the methods that I'm not really denying that all these could be used, okay? But for certain situations. They're used to deal with certain misconceptions that really related to them one could be, could be answered through them one way or a way. But as a da'wah methodology, it is explaining Islam to them. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ You call people, there is no God but Allah. People would come to the Prophet ﷺ and say, what are you calling for? He say to worship Allah alone, to pray, to believe in Muhammad as the messenger of Allah, to pray five times a day, to fast Ramadan. And some of them was at the time when there was Hajj or no Zakah. And he said, that's all? He said, he said, by Allah, I will not do any more like that than this. And Rasulullah said, he has succeeded if he was truthful. So Ikhwan Islam is very simple. Don't make it difficult for people. Islam is not dogmatic. If people want to get in dogma, you will not get out of that. Okay? Islam is very simple. Let it be simple. And people want simplicity. They don't want complications. Sometimes we talk about, if you want to know about Islam, you're a, uh, an economist. Say, I'll talk about the economic system, Islamic economic system. In comparison to the capitalist system, to, this might fit certain people, but it will not fit all people. Those people who are interested will ask you for it. Okay? But don't jump into people from the beginning talking about these issues that they may not really benefit from in the beginning. As a matter of fact, you detract them from the fundamentals of Islam. I want them to believe that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. They may not need to know. Many of us don't need to know about 80% about of the teaching of Islam. We don't need them because they're not related to our immediate life. If you are not a businessman and you're not going into riba, you don't need about these things. If you don't have camels, you don't need this. But all of us need to know who Allah is, who Muhammad is, how to perform our prayers, how to do, you see? Simple issues that we, we need. Sometimes we get ourselves into details that we don't need. If we need them, go for them. Now if I teach you how to make hajj, for two hours, you will never make hajj. Come. But when you go, when if you're going for hajj, and you want to go for hajj, you have the intention to go to hajj, and you are ready, and you have really paid your money, and you get your permit, now you'll learn. You see? It's not a theory to you. It's real practice. It is a reality. If you have been poor all your life, I say about to have the details of zakah. Oh, I don't have money now. How can I tell you? You don't know what money is. So, you see? Uh, and these are the pillars of Islam, not to mention details. Uh, every day, subhanAllah, we have scientific findings, and these we should be very clear about them and very careful. Because we are in a pro progressive world. We're not afraid of science. This religion promotes science. People who fear Allah the most are the scholars. And many scholars, non-Muslim scholars, have become Muslims because of finding out 
factual information about the Quran, about the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that have astonished me and many of the Muslims didn't know about them. You see? So we know this. And Islam is a religion of science. science. It's the only religion in the world because Christianity, most people have become a, uh, antagonistic to religion because of? Christian. The dogmatic understanding. Because the religion was fighting science. Yeah, they tell me the sun is rising at the east. You say, no, it's rising. Come on. I mean, these are facts that you cannot deny. But those people were really in control of the minds of others. This is why the French Revolution took place. And it was a disaster for humanity because the, 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 the secularism emerged, atheism emerged, antagonistic view of religion emerged because people were really dealing with a false religion and they generalized awful other religions. You see? And this is the problem that uh, religion in the world is facing. It's because of these false religions. Just like bad businessmen. Everybody think there, when you sell me bad tomatoes, I see all those farmers are bad because they're selling bad. There are very good farmers. They sell good tomatoes. But because I went to bad farmers and I met bad farmers, I get the impression that all farmers are cheaters. You see? Evidence from the people's way of life, and this is what people understand nowadays. We have become so much close to earth. We have, so much, we have become so much indulged in our way in daily life. I want something that helps me. Bring up my family. Live good life. Relax. I've been, many, I've been having many psychological problems. Social problems. And this is what the world is facing. Don't talk theory so much. We have enough theory. I need something that helps me live a good life. وَلِهَذَا اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَقُولْ لَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيْبًا الَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بُظُلْ وَلَائِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنَ Allah talks about good life. Because we want Islam is here to enjoy life. Christianity was not to enjoy life. If, you have, if you're good, you, have, you don't get married. If you're good, you live in a certain way of life. So a lot of restriction. No, Islam gives you open all ways for you. Okay, Allah created you. And this is why nowadays many people from the field of psychology and, soci and sociology have been getting into this area and studying Islam more than people in science. We focus on science only. But we don't realize that, yes, people might be astonished by science. But in reality, they want something that really touches their lives. Many people, when they became Muslim, said, I have a peace of mind now. A peace of mind that I have never, a peace of mind that I have never had in my life. And they're ready to give up their wealth, their fame, uh, their uh, s uh, desires. And you know many people, film stars, uh, athletes, uh, businessmen, politicians, they give everything for the sake of peace of mind with the religion of peace, Islam. Uh, well, I get tired. I want you to say, stop. We want to go. Well, I get tired. Like, I enjoy it. Alhamdulillah. Anyway, I had some misconceptions. And I said the list is very long. Very long. Very long. We talk about them, and I take one by one. Uh, I mean, we need workshops a lot to just deal with any of them. But I'm just telling you something. Don't get indulged in misconceptions a lot. Okay? They are endless. Let's represent Islam in a very simple way. We learn first. We should know what Islam really is and what the need of other people is. So we present it to them in a very simple way. <coughs> Remember the aspirin. Forget about the complicated medications. It's Islam is very simple. could be encapsulated in a simple manner to those people. Yes, we'll face misconceptions. People will disagree with us. And this is uh, 
something I think it's, 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 it's the norm, but not the way it has, the volume that has been uh, presented in the world nowadays. I'll be happy to listen to your questions or comments, corrections. Jazakumullah khair, and again, I thank my colleagues.